many of the students who come into 6042 uh, seen a lot of math in high school and done well on their SATs, but have not been exposed very much to proof. And that's uh, something that's very important in mathematics and in 6042 in particular. Uh, so we're going to kind of run through uh, what's maybe a review or maybe new to some of you about basic methods for proving things. One of the most basic is called proof by contradiction, which in fact may be so familiar that you never noticed it before, but we'll highlight it and give you a couple of examples now. So let's begin with an elementary example of proof by contradiction. Namely, I'm going to wonder if I could uh, prove that the cube root of 1,332 was less than or equal to 11, or prove that it's not. Um, how am I going to settle that? Well, I claim that it's not less than or equal to 11. And the way I'm going to prove that is by assuming that it is and then reaching an absurd conclusion. That's the basic idea of proof by contradiction. So let's work it out. Now, how would you settle this ordinarily? Well, you could try computing the cube root of 1,332. And if you had a little hand calculator uh, or a smartphone with a calculator built in, it'd be easy. But uh, if you had to do it by hand, computing cube roots is a little more cumbersome. Uh, and there's a very simple way to do this without actually computing the cube root. Namely, let's assume that this inequality holds. And let's cube both sides. So if I cube both sides, I'm saying if this holds, then the inequality 1,332 less than or equal to 11 cubed must hold. Now, computing 11 cubed is a lot easier than computing the cube root of 1,332. In fact, the cube of 1,131 is easy to see is 1,331. Hey, wait a minute. Look what's happened. I've just concluded that this bigger number is less than or equal to that smaller number under the assumption that this inequality held. It's absurd. Uh, if that inequality hold, held, uh, big numbers are smaller than larger numbers. Uh, smaller numbers, blah, 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 you get it. <laughs> and that absurdity means that the original hypothesis must have been false. So in fact, it must be that the cube root of 1,332 is greater than 11. So in general, proof by contradiction operates under this principle that if an assertion implies something that's false, then the assertion itself must have been false in the first place. That's really the definition of implies, actually, if you think about it. The definition of applies is that um, if something true implies something else, the something else also has to be true. So if the original thing was true and it implied something, the conclusion would have had to be true, which means if the conclusion is false, the original thing must have been false. Um, I'll let you meditate about that, but it really is a, a, such a basic principle of reasoning that, you again, you, we take it for granted and you probably uh, never thought about it carefully, but now that I've highlighted, you should be comfortable with it. Let's apply it now to a really uh, interesting example. It's simple, but it's a wonderful fact that goes back several thousand years to the ancient Greeks. Uh, namely, that not all numbers are rational. A rational number is a quotient of two integers. Uh, and what the Greeks had actually figured out was that the square root of 2 is an example of a thing that you'd say was a number, but it's not a rational number. It's not a quotient of, of integers. It's so-called irrational, meaning it's not rational. Um, how are we going to prove this? Well, we're going to prove this by contradiction. We're going to assume, to the contrary, that the square root of 2 actually was rational. Okay. Now, if it's rational, then that means that I got a numerator and denominator, n and d, that are integers, uh, and that the square root of 2 is equal to n over d. And as usual with fractions, I can assume that the fraction is in lowest terms, namely that n and d have no prime factors, because if they had any prime factors, I could cancel them out and finally wind up with a numerator and denominator that were in lowest form. OK, so we figured out that under the assumption square root of 2 is rational, that the square root of 2 is equal to numerator over denominator, neither of which has a common a common prime factor. And now I'm going to do a little proof in a moment that shows you that both n and d have to be even. Now, even means that they have the factor 2 in common. So this immediately contradicts the fact that they have no common factor. Yeah. So that's a proof by contradiction. And what remains uh, to do is to fill in this argument that under the assumption square root of 2 is n over d, that uh, n and d are both even. 
And let's do that now. Okay, so I've got square root of two is n over d. Let's start simplifying, get rid of the denominator d, multiply across. So I have square root of two times d is equal to n. Now we can clean this up by squaring both sides to get rid of the square root of two. So I get two d squared is equal to n squared. Well, what that tells me is that n squared is even. Definition of even is that it's a multiple of two. So if n squared is even, that means n has to be even. I've, I'm halfway there, so n is even. Now, n is even again means that n is twice something. So let's assume that n is of the form twice k, an integer. Um, and now, with the aim of connecting up to this conclusion, I'm going to square both sides. So n squared is equal to 4k squared. Now I can connect up these two equations and notice that I'm going to get 2d squared is equal to 4k squared. Yeah. Now it's easy enough to cancel 2 from both sides and I get that d squared is equal to twice k squared. d squared is 2 times something, which means once again d, is, d squared is even and therefore d is even. I finished what I was obligated to do. Uh, the proof is done and we indeed have figured out that the square root of 2 is irrational because to assume otherwise leads to an absurd conclusion. Now, one wrap up is that I'm using an elementary mathematical fact that uh, it's worth thinking about for a moment, namely that if n squared is even, then n is even. And you might think, why is this true? Well, it's true on very general principles that we'll talk about maybe in class and later, but there's a simple way to actually verify this right now by contradiction. Suppose to the contrary that n was odd. Well, that means that n squared is the product of two odd numbers. And we do know from the most elementary arithmetic that the product of two odd numbers is odd. So assuming that n is odd contradicts the fact that n squared is even, therefore n must be even. QED, uh, we are done.